my name is John and within the next 10 minutes, aside from watching me do some stupid hamster dancing, you're going to learn about how to create a page on Embraco and document types. You're going to learn about root hijacking and how to create a controller within Embraco. And finally, you're going to learn about how to create models using the model builder to help you write cleaner code. This video is episode two in the series of how to build a website with an Embraco V8. If you want more of the series, don't forget to hit the subscribe button now. Let me start by explaining what exactly is a document type? Document types can be thought of as page templates and for each different type of page that you want a content editor to be able to create, you will need to create a specific document type for it. To allow content editors to be able to add content into our CMS, we will need to add properties onto our document types. Now within Embraco, we add things called property editors and data types. So as we can see from this drop down list, we have a number of default property editors within Embraco. These are things like a text box, an image, a media picker. So the property editor can be thought of as like the underlining data type within programming. So a string or an int. The data type is a thing which we actually add on to the document type and it is an instantiation of the property editor. So in the background here, as you can see, we have a home logo media picker. So this is a media picker which is added onto the home page. Now don't worry too much if you don't get the nuances between the property editor and the data type yet. The main takeaway is that you need to create a document type which is basically a template and you need to add properties onto that document type so content editors can add data in the CMS. Simple. So the first thing we're going to do is create a document type within Embraco. So log into your Embraco instance and from here we're going to click on the settings at the top. From settings you can see we have this document types option. So what we're going to do to create our hamster dance document type is click on the ellipsis here, go to document type, we're going to call it hamster dance. One thing which is really important to note is this alias. This is basically going to be the name of our controller, so we need to remember this for later on. Now we need to create a group. Group is not that important. This is basically the container for our properties. We're going to create a title, and the title is going to be a text box. So in here we do title, and we're going to do select editor. As you can see from here, we have loads of different property editors that you can pick from. I won't go through everything now, but we're just going to have a text box. So we're going to do text string, click submit, and then finally click save down the bottom. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make sure that the hamster dance template can be used within the CMS by content editors. So what we need to do is allow the hamster dance template to be created underneath our home page. So within our document types, if we click on the home one, we can then go over to this permissions up here. Clicking on that, you can see allowed child node types. So what we're gonna do is add a child, and then from here, we're gonna add in the hamster dance type. After saving the document type, if we now look in our main menu, we can see that we have this hamster dance link. Clicking on this does nothing because we haven't hooked it up yet. So let's do that now. Okay, so now we have our document type configured. We're on to the next step of doing some root hijacking. Root hijacking is another fancy word within the Embraco vernacular. And basically what it means is that we're gonna create a custom controller. And when a request comes in for that document type, instead of Embraco doing default behavior, it's just simply gonna call our custom controller. Let's just quickly go over the hamster dance HTML that we will be importing into our document type. Now, for those wondering, I did not create this website. This was actually a thing of the 90s. Very weird, I know, spinning gerbils and all that sort of stuff. The 90s was a crazy time. The thing what we do care about is we have some HTML. We're going to import this into a view. And if we look over here, we also have this, the hamster dance. What we're gonna do is replace this text with an Embraco property, which we're gonna define on our document type. The other thing that we should know is that we have all these beautiful spinning GIFs. Everyone loved the uh, spinning GIF in the 90s. When we work with Umbraco normally, we would use the media library to upload images and then use the API to render them on a template. To keep this uh, example very simple, we're not going to do that. We'll do that in a later tutorial, but that is an option. 
So the first thing we're going to do is create a controller. So we're going to go to our controllers folder. We're going to add, we're going to go to controller. In here, we're going to click add. We're going to call it hamster dance. Now this is really important. This name here, you have to match the document type alias that you created within the back end. If these do not match, then the root hijacking will not work as expected. Now we have a hamster dance controller. At the moment it's using vanilla MVC. What we want to do is unbrackify it. Pretty sure that's not a word, but let's go with it anyway. So to unbrackify our controller, what we want to do is turn, change the default controller to use a render MVC controller. Perfect. If we zoom onto that quickly, you can see that it uh, comes from the Umbraco Web MVC. We now have this beautiful using namespace. The other one that we'll care about very shortly is using umbraco.web.models. This will allow us to pass in something called the content model. Amazing. This is going to be the data that the CMS passes into our hijacked route. In our public, we're going to override. This is because render MVC controller has its own index. We also now want to return the current template. I think we can just do that. And we can pass in our item. And that's it. We now have a Umbraco 5. Controller. Now that we have the controller nailed, let's go on to the view. So when you created your document type within Embraco, don't be surprised that within your view folder that you have a corresponding HTML file. Note the CS HTML file, this is the view extension. So when we click on this, we can see that we get an error in line one up here. And this is because we haven't done the model binding yet. We'll do that later, but for now, we'll just delete this. Otherwise, we'll bump into an error. Next thing, we're gonna copy our hamster HTML. So if I just do a select all, go back here, paste it in, click save. Now, when we go to our sample site, I'm gonna click on hamster dance, and hopefully, if things go according to plan, we get some beautiful dancing. So we are smashing through this tutorial at the moment we've created a document type, we've done our root hijacking, the next thing is to do the model binding. When we use Model Builder with Embraco, we can generate C-sharp classes which will represent our document types. Now this is really handy because it means we can use IntelliSense, so if you have an updated property, you'll be able to find everywhere in your code base that references it. You'll be able to write unit tests easier, and in general, you'll be able to use all the strongly typed goodness that a language like C-sharp provides. If you've ever written any JavaScript, then you'll know not having a strongly typed language can be a pain in the bottom. There are two types of modes that we can use with the model builder. Now, the one which comes with the sample site is called the pure live models. And this mode will generate all our models within an assembly within the bin folder. Now, the issue that I have with this is that I can't access or view what properties associated the document type without either using .peak and doing reflection to look in an assembly or going within the CMS and having a check. Now, if you're like me and you're a little bit forgetful and you forget what properties are associated with what document types and you want a quick, easy way to check, a better mode that I recommend is using the app data models. So app data will basically generate all the C-sharp class files within your project. This means that you'll have to compile your project to be able to see the changes, but you'll be able to easily see what properties are within your document types. Now, I also like to go one step further. I don't really like having code within my app data folder. So what I prefer to do is have all my code generated in a separate class library. So I'll show you how to do that now. The model builder is completely configured via the web config. So within your web route, let's open the web config file. Go to your app settings. And then within here, you'll find a two app settings, one which says enabled and one which has the models mode. Now to save myself the embarrassment of having to do all this live typing, what I'm gonna do is comment out this line. And I'm gonna uncomment this line. Let's quickly go over the settings which are located up here. 
Now that you understand the model mode a little bit better, you can understand that we're using app data instead of pure live. This means that we're going to be generating C sharp classes within our project. Now, because we actually want to generate these C sharp classes outside of our web group, we need to have this accept unsafe model directory equals true. And in the models directory, we need to specify where the class library will exist. So because we're using the tilde, what we're saying is this folder and the name of our class library, which is going to be Braco core models published content is going to be outside of our web group. And the default namespace is just going to be the namespace that the classes get generated with. So now let's create our class library. So creating a new class library should hopefully be very easy. What we do is right click on our solution, go to add, and go to new projects. From here, we're just going to do class library. We're going to use the .NET one, click next, paste in our namespace, make sure it's 472, otherwise it won't work. Put it in our folder, click create. So now that we have our newly generated c -sharp class library, we can delete this unneeded class that was generated. Now let's generate our models. Log back into the CMS and we'll go to settings. We can go to the model builder. And as you can see, we have this generate models button. What we're going to do is click on generate models back to our visual studio go to our class library we're going to show all our hidden files and as you can see we now have all of our document types and the one that we really care about is the hamster dance amazing now that we have all the generated document type files within our class library what we want to do is first include them all within the project otherwise it won't compile if you try and compile your class library now you will encounter hundreds of errors. And that is because we still haven't added the correct unbracket dependencies into the project. So let's fix that now. We can do that by right clicking on our projects. We're gonna to go to manage new get packages. Within here, we're gonna type in Umbraco. And what we're gonna do is install the model builder. This may take a while. We are also going to install the Umbraco CMS web. Now to make sure that our models are accessible to our controller code within our web project, we'll quickly add a reference. So right click on our web project. We're going to go to add. We're going to go to reference. From here in the project solution, we're going to tick our class library. We're going to click OK. Quickly, we're going to go to build. As we can see, build succeeded. And this means that now we should have access to our models within our web project. Perfect. Now let's go back to the controller. We are now back in our hamster dance controller where we can try and use our model for the power of good. So what we want to do is quickly go in our action, do var hamster. And we want to do new hamster dance. As you can see it's picked up. And what we're going to do is pass our item Constructor. Now we're going to pass the hamster into our template. And this is mainly because we might need to do a item content. And that's it. We now have a strongly typed model and we can pass that into our view to you. Okay, so we are on the home stretch. All we need to do now is hook up our model to be used within our view. So the first thing we want to do is open up our hamster dance CSHTML and we'll need to set the model correctly. Now, instead of remembering how to do this, I'll just go into the home. So what we can see here is because we changed the namespace, we're getting an error, so it can no longer find the home model. So we'll quickly change that. Click save. We're now gonna copy this inherits line because it's much easier than trying to type it out by hand. We're gonna go back in here, and then we're gonna change home and use IntelliSense hamster dance the next step is to update the template to pull the heading from the CMS rather than having it hard coded on the template directly we can do this by going to the h1 on the template deleting our hard coded text doing an at and then model 
this will access to our strongly typed model we just passed in and now I can do title which is the name of the property I created on the document type clicking save this should now mean that the title is pulled from the CMS now it's time to reload the hamster dance page to see what happens okay so we're back on the sample site we're about to hit hamster dance let's see what happens boom as you can see we now have our page work as expecting we're pulling in data via our strongly typed models as you can see this is now saying this is a stupid page rather than hamster page and there we have it and there you have it within 10 minutes you have learned about document types in umbraco you've learned about root hijacking and how you can create your own controllers and you've also learned how to generate strongly typed models so you can create better and cleaner code within your code base so what did you think I'd love to hear your feedback or suggestions about other videos you'd love to see in this series. Even if it's just that you love dancing hamsters and you want to send me a picture of a hamster, I'd love to hear it. If you would like to learn more about Umbraco, then I have a few options for you. So option one, if you want to be a complete legend, hit subscribe. I would amazingly appreciate it. You would be an epic legend. If you'd like to learn more about Umbraco in a bit of a more condensed format, please consider buying my book. It's very cheap, it's like $9.99 and it will help you and it will help me. Lastly, you can go to my website, that's a free resource. There's about 500 tutorials all about Umbraco. It's johndjones.com, that's J-O-N-D-J-O-N-E-S.com. Anyway, you've been amazing. I hope you've enjoyed this. Happy coding.